the type of problems most useful for improving your pattern finding skills is but the median weighting for them is so it means everyone treats lead code like it's a chess game but honestly it's way more like a first person shooter match if you have the right skills and habits you can study only one tenth of the amount of problems but still leave your opponents in a bloodbath after a game overall there are three skills that separate the lead code pro players from the bottom fraggers skill one finding observations faster is like your map awareness skill two implementing solutions faster is like your aim mechanics and skill three live print debugging is like checking your corners today we will focus on skill one because there's no point in having the perfect aim if you keep flashbang yourself with bad logic please comment either implement or debug depending on which skill you want me to talk about next today we will go from how to pick questions to how to read hints how to reflect and then how to do it with a long-term vision in mind meanwhile please hit the like and subscribe button so you get notified when videos on the other two skills are dropped like how PUBG drops the players tip 1 analyze lead code with a quantitative mindset pro gamers are more analytical than casuals they track reload time time to kill pickers advantage and economy lead code problems can be quantified too beyond easy medium and hard problems have a numeric rating higher ratings correspond to more difficult problems one of the easiest problems running some of 1d array has a rating of 1105 the hardest problem right now check if the rectangular corner is reachable has a rating of 3774 you can use this website to find the ratings of specific lead code problems or this grace monkey script to view the ratings right on the problem pages then you can find out the rating for your current algorithmic skills it's sort of like playing competitively in a ranked season except that the test is called the lead code contests you can do the past ones for practice and skill gauging anytime and the real-time ones on the weekends if you're rated say at 1800 you essentially have a 50 percent odds by the definition of the rating to win the duel against 1800 rated problems you will have better odds like 75 percent when you face problems rated below 1800 like a 1600 rated problem and worse odds when facing when rated above 1800 if say you encounter a 2400 problem or like a 2200 problem there's almost no chance that you can beat it in fact i ranked every company by the median rating of their interview questions in a tfidf way so this excludes the common problems that almost every company would ask so granted it's not super rigorous but it should still give us a somewhat overestimated indicators for the ratings required to get into specific companies remember how i said that 2100 used to be the gold standard to get into google the big g but the median rating for them is 1643 and the night this percentile is 2277 so it means if you want a reasonably good chance to pass your google interviews 2100 is a pretty good bar the difficulty actually goes from Google to Amazon to Apple and then Meta. But Meta is special in that they tend to ask two easy questions in the same time that other companies would use to ask only one. So Meta's difficulty is definitely on par with Google. And tip two, rating focused practice. Once you have your rank, solve problems or scram around problems rated at your rating plus 200. For example, an 1800 rated player should tackle problems rated at 2000. That's like practicing against players slightly better than you. Painful, but that's how you stop wavering logic shots and upgrade your game sense. Think of you playing CS competitively. If you always play against players at or below your level, you won't gain skills as fast as, say, when playing against players that are just a notch better than you and learning from them and the bonus tip is that the type of problems most useful for improving 
your pattern finding skills is constructive problems. They're like your aim training range for logic. Unfortunately, Lico doesn't have dedicated tag for constructive problems. They're more common on platforms like Code Forces, where you most likely would want to use C++ to solve problems. But if you don't know C++, you can train the thinking first. That's why you should check out today's sponsor, Brilliant.org. They have interactive challenges to drill scientific thinking in your mindset. A hands-on learning platform for math, computer science, and data. Instead of passive lectures, Brilliant.org gives you interactive, bite-sized challenges that make you do the thing. Drag nodes to explore graphs, tweak recurrences to feel dynamic programming, and use logical puzzles to sharpen variants and constructive reasoning. The recommended tracks for computer science people would be Foundation Math, Programming and CS, as well as Logic Reasoning. Do a lesson a day on your phone or laptop. It takes just a few minutes, but the interactivity sticks. To learn for free on Brilliant, go to brilliant.org forward slash ZachLight. Scan the QR code on screen or click on the link in the description. Brilliant's also given our viewers 20% off an annual premium subscription, which gives you unlimited daily access to everything on Brilliant. Tip number three. When you are stuck, use hints like you'd use abilities that require cooldown periods. If you cannot come up with a solution after staring at the problem for 10 minutes, pick out a hint. Still no clue after another 10 minutes? Look at the second hint. The next one would be the topic tag, which is like a mini map. Then, the title of the editorial. It's like a teammate shouting, he's behind you. And the next one would be the intuition part. It's the text of the editorial without the actual code. It's basically the kill cam showing how you died. And finally, if you still can get it, you can record the full code of the solution. It's like the spectator mode view of someone who actually knows what they're doing. So don't just dump all your nades in spawn. Learn to time them. Comment mark if you want to see me solve a problem in real time. Tip number four, copy the solution to your own repository. Every player knows improvement doesn't come from kills. It comes from watching your own mistakes in slow-mo. It means creating a Git repository containing your solution to every problem you solve. You want to paste the code, then add a block comment at the top, your post-match analysis, as well as the problem statement in the readme file besides it. Write down what you have learned, what angles you missed, and what techniques could have saved you. Comment Python if you want to see the gacha that I collected from solving problems in Python, and comment CPP if you want to see the C++ version. More importantly, version control and IDE provide numerous advantages. Advantage 1. IDE provides linting, points out bugs like memory leak, missing ports, and brings bad coding styles to your attention, all of which would be evaluated in your coding interviews, but not on lead code. The second advantage is that version control allows you to reflect on the evolution of your analysis by comparing past commits. It has saved me countless times where I needed to roll back my failed attempt to optimize my solution. Third, you won't be paying for the code premium forever. In fact, I have begged them for partial refunds each time I got done with job hopping. No bore it or thank you for keeping the problem statement and solution locally. Fourth, with all your solutions in text files, you can conduct all kinds of analysis. Be it looking up code templates, batch fix and bugs, or analyzing which category of problems you are the weakest and need the most training, like I have done in this video. Tip number five, periodically review solved problems. It's like rewatch your plays and see which habits get you fragged and which clutch moments you pulled off. For me, I review the local solutions I have saved before every job hub. It's like warm up drills before a tournament. You don't want to be cold, but Thanks to my unique reviewing system, I don't need to spend a lot of time each time. The way I do it is that I would read the problem statement first to see if I can come up with a solution in my mind by myself. If no, I will leave a word like to do review in the analysis block of the problem. So out of 1000 problems I have done, 
one round of review leaves me with 250 marked problems. Then, the next time I need to job hop, I just review the 250 marked problems and remove the marks from the problems that I then remembered how to solve. I would end up with perhaps only 100 marked problems afterward. You see, each round of reviews would leave you to be even faster in the next round, except that you would also solve new problems and introduce new marked problems, like this video has shown you the necessity of. At the end of the day, Leecode is just another competitive game, but the goal isn't to beat Leecode. The goal is to build a version of you that can walk into any interview, any codebase, and any system round and not flinch. You're proving to yourself not to Leecode that when it's 1v4 and everyone thinks you're done, you can still clutch. Every solved problem is not just XP, it's proof that you stay in the round and are getting hard to headshot. So keep going, trust your reads, clear your angles, check your corner cases, keep your crosshair at head level. And if this video helped you feel a little less alone in the grind, do me a favor, drop a like to feel my motivation gauge, hit the subscribe button so don't miss the videos going over the next two skills, comment your grading and send this to a friend who's stuck and needs to hear that they're not actually bad. They just need the right massage. Good game, and see you in the next match.